this cultural her heritage aspects as well. Next slide, please. So we also, as I mentioned, we see agrobiodiversity as a key component of um, our transformation towards more sustainable food systems in, in Switzerland. I think it's interesting to know that uh, this question of uh, is, is actually also anchored in our, in our constitution. The Swiss agriculture is not just supposed to contribute to our food security and, and a certain degree of food sovereignty, but is also supposed to do that while preserving natural resources. And this includes um, agrobiodiversity. The way we see it, we want to conserve um, this biodiversity through sustainable use. Uh, it is indeed for these sustainable food systems, we need a large variety of um, of, uh, of um, crops for food and, and agriculture. And this is anchored in many, many different uh, both strategic and poli policy instruments uh, that we have in Switzerland. We have a new sustainable development strategy um, where this uh, transformation of food systems is, is anchored and where agrobiodiversity plays an important part. Uh, on the picture with the, the plate and the fork is the, the picture that illustrates our new agricultural policy uh, 2022 plus. And there again, um, it's an important part of it. The, that's at the strategic level, but also then we have a diversity of measures and policy level, for example, direct payments that are explicitly aimed to contribute to um, agricultural biodiversity and uh, healthy ecosystems. And as well, of course, we also have um, a very good uh, gene bank in, in, in Changin. And how do we do this? Um, we try to do this the, the Swiss way. Um, this means a multi-stakeholder approach. We really try to engage um, uh, policy makers, but also the industry, it's heavily on board, as well as civil society. In this respect, the, the, the national um, the food pathways following the UN Food System Summits have been a, a really interesting first step that has been followed, for example, by a citizen assembly discussing these, um, these questions. And we also try to connect the different levels. Um, for those of you based in Switzerland, you know you have the local level, we have the cantonal level that has an important role to play the national level, but also the different um, levels within the, the, the food system. Huh? We, I mentioned before, we have an imperative of, of trying to ensure food security, but we also have to do this preserving natural resources. And so agrobiodiversity is a key link to connect these, um, these different levels. Next slide, please. So how do we do this then internationally? And this connects uh, now to the FAO and to the, and to the CBD. As was mentioned with Mr. Semedo, agriculture is indeed a driver of biodiversity loss and therefore it has to be um, a solution to it. And we believe that agriculture is indeed a, a solution to, uh, to this biodiversity loss. Agroecology uh, and its principles are a crucial approach to, to this, taking into account all possible aspects of, of, um, of biodiversity and ecosystems. And this is reflected in our international engagement for agrobiodiversity and agroecology. So we are a member of the Agroecology uh, Coalition. Um, we are active and support FAO's work in these questions, for example, through the Commission on Genetic Resources, um, through its um, strategy on mainstreaming biodiversity, the, and the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for, for Food and Agriculture. Switzerland is also a member of the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and, and People. Next slide, please. So back to, to COP15, uh, after a bit this overview of, of the situation in Switzerland. Um, we see it, of course, as, the, as a key moment for biodiversity in, in agriculture. The negotiation of the, the post-2020 GBF um, will be an essential step, I think, in, in uh, not just reversing biodiversity loss, but, but going beyond. We believe it's important to consider the specificities of biodiversity for food agriculture and link these, these different objectives, as I mentioned before, food security, reversing biodiversity loss, et cetera. Um, we would like to push for uh, uh, ambitious conservation targets and through sustainable use of this biodiversity. For those of you who follow um, the CBD a bit more closely, it's the famous target 10 of the post-2020 GBF. And this we would like to see 
um, we believe that agroecology has an important role to play in, 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 uh, in fostering this sustainable use of biodiversity. I would like to make a small digression on, on the soils. Um, let's not forget about them. They host more than one quarter of the world's uh, biodiversity. Um, and it's important that we don't forget their, their importance. And last, last but not least, um, we believe uh, strongly that the different in instruments um, available, the different mechanisms, for example, the international treaty, the CBD, also CITES, Ramsar, etc. They need to be really mutually supportive and collaborate together for um, for a successful global bio new global biodiversity framework. Um, that's very briefly the the Swiss perspective, and um, I remain I'll be available throughout the the webinar for for questions um, if if needed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Franier. And very nice last, last slide by you. Biodiversity in potatoes, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but thank you indeed for, for presenting the Swiss perspective and uh, why agrobiodiversity is a key component of transformation of agri food system in, uh, in Switzerland, uh, reminding us that it is even anchored in the, in the constitution. And then um, how it is done. Uh, how you do it the, the, the Swiss way, as you described, and uh, and then of course uh, presenting the, the importance of uh, agriculture being part of the solution in terms of, uh, of biodiversity loss, and um, and then your ambition for COP um, fifteen, which you described as a, a key moment for biodiversity and uh, and agriculture. So thank you very much, uh, Miss Fanier, and. Uh, of course, we are we are delighted that you are there and willing to to engage. Uh, now we will go. We'll make another attempt uh, to connect, Mr. Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu, are you connected? Yes. Can you hear me? Ah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Please, uh, we are delighted to have you, uh, Mr. Liu, and uh, please you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, for your introduction, also for your invitation uh, to this important event. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to meet online to discuss the important issue of biodiversity conservation. As the COP15 presidency, China is grateful to the FAO Lansen office in Geneva for organizing this uh, important meeting to provide a good opportunity for us to exchange the idea to FAO for its positive role in promoting the coordination of biodiversity conservation and the economic and the social developments as to all stakeholders for your ongoing concerns and the support to global biodiversity governance and uh, COVID-19 related work and the, the convention. Biodiversity is a foundation for the human survival and uh, development and uh, is closely linked to our food security, nutrition and health culture and uh, cultivation, uh, civilization, rich and uh, varied crops, the household products and aquatic uh, products provide us with uh, a balanced and nutrient rich, diverse uh, agroecosystem, agriculture, landscape, agriculture, techn uh, techniques, their cultures and agriculture policies are all an example of how it has uh, learned to to use biodiversity sustainability sustainability and uh, live in harmony with nature and uh, reveal games of wisdom they are significant components of human civilization and the cultural heritage. The fast train of global biodiversity loss has yet been adequately uh, held, and the governance of biodiversity has a long way to go. Within the face of a 
global challenges such as the biodiversity loss, climate change, environmental pollution, and food security. We, the human being, share a common future. It is a, a general consensus of the international community to conserve biodiversity, promote the sustainable use and benefit the sharing of biological resources, count and reverse the wretched loss of biodiversity and advance the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. China plays a high premium on biodiversity and ecological environmental governance. We adhere to concept of systematic governance to promote carbon reduction, pollution re reduction, green exp expansion and growth in a coordinated manner and coordinates the relationship among biodiversity, conservation, climate change, mitigation, and adaptation, environmental pollution control, food security, and human well-being. China has evaluated biodiversity and climate change governance to nature strategy, uh, thoroughly incorporated them in, into all face effects of the country's economic and social development and uh, pro prioritize uh, them to promote ecologic civilization construction, achieve high quality development. China has established leading systems such as the carbon peak and uh, carbon neutrality, leading groups and the China National Committee for Biodiversity Conservation and uh, Supervision Mechanism like the Central Ecological and the Environmental Protection Inspectorate to advance the significant ecological and environmental production uh, task in a sustainable, uh, organized, and efficient manner. China is uh, an activists in the governance of biodiversity. We have built a national uh, spatial development and protection uh, strategies to coordinate the layout of production, living and ecological space. We implement a system of ecologic protection right lines that effectively cons conserves more than 25% of the nation's land area. We strive to create a protected area framework with a focus on national parks. We carry out a 10-year fishing ban in the Yangtze River, continuously strengthen the investigation, collection, protection, and the utilization of its agricultural forest and uh, grassland resources, update or introduce a series of laws and regulations in an effort to bolster the conservation and the sustainable utilization of the ecosystem, species and uh, genetic uh, resources. China consensually undertakes its international obligations and uh, taking uh, international responsibilities come straight to its development stage. China actively explores the synergy of sustainable development goals such as biodiversity conservation and poverty reduction. After years of uh, practices, China has developed a biodiversity conservation system based on government's guidance, corporate responsibility, and extensive public participation, resulting in mutual beneficial outcomes of biodiversity conservation, sustainable use, and economic and social development. China has been upholding a concept of a community with a shared future for mankind actively engaged in international cooperation on biodiversity conservation and implemented a wealth of 
cooperation project and active activities with other countries and the frameworks of Belt and the Road Global Development Initiative and the South South Cooperation, providing support to the ecological conservation of the developing countries. Ladies and gentlemen, last October, the first phase of COP15 was held in Kunming, China, with over 5,000 delegates from more than 150 parties and more than 30 international institutions and organizations. President Xi Jinping attended the leader summit virtually and delivered a keynote speech announcing the official establishment of the first batch of national parks and other important initiatives. The Kunming Declaration adopted injected strong political impetus into the global biodiversity governance process and increase worldwide confidence in biodiversity conservation. The second part of the COP15 will be held next month in Montreal and China will continue to lead the substantive and the political affairs Deals by Director General Semedo and the distinguished speaker from Switzerland. The post 2020 Global Biodiversity Framework, which is being prepared as a programmatic document to guide global biodiversity governance in the coming period, particularly until 2030, is an important expected outcome of the second part of the COP15. The GBF offers a crucial chance and a platform for modifying our interaction with nature. The adoption and the effective implementation of the GBF will significantly bolster the mainstreaming of biodiversity direct countries to adopt a more sustainable modes of production and life, and further strengthen the sustainable utilization of biological resources and the fair and equitable sharing of benefit. As a result, man can, can enjoy the benefit of biodiversity in reducing poverty mainstreaming food security and promoting sustainable development. The GBF negotiations are currently in a, a spring phase, even though all parties put a lot of uh, efforts on this uh, and uh, demonstrated a strong political commitment during the four round of working group consultations, we must ad admit that overall progress had not been as good as uh, anticipated and that there are still significant differences on critical issues like resource mobilization and uh, digital sequence information on genetic uh, resources. The negotiation are still uh, Dorsen. During info, informal talks in September, delegates from the five regions discussed and uh, condensed the, the GBF text in the technical aspect, resulting in a more readable and uh, logical proposal. We urge all parties to use it as a base for follow up uh, consultations. Ladies and gentlemen, as the COP15 presidency, China had made every effort to ensure a leadership and coordination role in encouraging all parties to collaborate on the GBF. China has organizing exchanges on key COP15 issue and the high level round table meeting during events and opportunities like the United Nations high level Political Forum 2022 on Sustainable Development, the G20 Joint Environment and Climate Minister Meeting, the high-level week of the 
70, uh, 77 session of the United Nations General Assembly and the United Nations Framework uh, Convention on, on Climate Change, COP27, during which China communicate and cooperate with minister of different countries on the uh, successful running of the second part of COP15 and uh, attainments of the GBF. I was honored to moderate some of the ministers in, in Shamsaye last week. Here, I hope that all parties will take advantage of the last chance to sprint to the second part of the COP15 activity practice and the global governance concept of extensive consultation, joint contribution and shared benefit, further strengthen the political view to reach the GBF with account to the actual situation of each country, demonstrate the sprint spread of collaboration pragmatism and flexibility and maximize the ambition and pragmatic GBF as the second part of the COP15. Therefore, I view uh, use uh, uh, in a new era of global biodiversity governance. I thank you for your uh, patience. Thank you, uh, Director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Liu, for your comprehensive uh, presentation. I would like, of course, to thank China for the presidency of, uh, of uh, your presidency of COP15 with the objective to have a global biodiversity framework adopted in Montreal in December. Uh, thank you also for outlining all the efforts which you are undertaking at the uh, at national level, recognizing the importance of agriculture, agri agroecosystem, and agricultural policies uh, for the, indeed, the conservation of uh, biodiversity, for outlining all the efforts undertaken and the, the, relevant, the, the related governance with the extensive uh, community participation, as you, as you described. And of course, we can only salute the, 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 the effort, the objective to create 25% of your territory as a protected area. I think this is indeed uh, uh, remarkable. Thank you also uh, for uh, the, the effort that has been made in the context of the, of the first part of COP15, which was a, a success in, in Kunming, uh, with uh, an ambitious Kunming uh, declaration that was uh, adopted. And we wish to, uh, of course, we, we wish the second part of the of COP15 uh, uh, as successful as, as, the, as the second one. Uh, thank you also for highlighting uh, a few of the, of the remaining uh, discussions that will need to take place, and we hope that uh, indeed a solution uh, will be found uh, to these issues and that uh, this will lead to the adoption of a new uh, global uh, diversity framework. So thank you, a biodiversity framework. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Liu, for your, for your intervention. I hope you can stay with us uh, for the, the rest of the, the, of the session this morning. Uh, and now it is my great pleasure to, uh, to give the floor uh, to my colleague, uh, Frédéric Castel, who is a senior natural resource officer at FEO headquarters, the Office of Climate Change, Biodiversity and Environment, who will present the links between agri-food system and biodiversity including on FAO's work uh, and the importance of uh, agriculture negotiation at COP15. Frédéric, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dominique. Uh, good morning, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Liu, Ms. Franier, for you, your presentation. Uh, it's really a, a pleasure to be part of this um, webinar. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to present a FAO's work on mainstream biodiversity across agricultural sectors. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to present FAO's engagement in uh, COP15. Uh, while FAO is starting, uh, while uh, COP15 is starting in, in two weeks, I will try to put uh, FAO's work in, in, in perspective. Next slide, please. Uh, so the structure of my presentation, I will uh, first uh, uh, try to define uh, 
how how qualified biodiversity for food and agriculture. Then I'll present the power strategy on mainstream biodiversity across agricultural sectors. Then I'll make the link with the upcoming uh, conference um, of the of the UN Biodiversity Conference uh, COP15 that will take place in Montreal. And I will uh, particularly focus on on the post 2020 global biodiversity. City framework before to conclude on, on the way forward for, for FA. Uh, next slide, please. So, before to present uh, Fall's work on biodiversity, I would like to start by clarifying what FAO intends by biodiversity for food and agriculture. As defined uh, in the state of the world, or, uh, state of the world biodiversity for food and agriculture. Uh, prepared in 2019 uh, under the guidance of the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. Biodiversity for Food and Agriculture is uh, defined as a subset of biodiversity that contributes in one way or another to agriculture and food production. Um, it includes the domest domesticated uh, plants and animals raised in crops, livestock, forest and agriculture system the wide variety of domesticated species, wild species are harvested for food and other products, and what is known as a associated biodiversity, which is a, the vast range of uh, organisms that live in and around food and agriculture production systems. So, um, our biodiversity for food and agriculture is much more than uh, agro-biodiversity. It includes a uh, plant, uh, animals, and mi microorganisms that uh, underpin uh, production, whether by maintaining uh, healthy soil, as uh, mentioned by uh, uh, Ms. Franier, uh, pollination plants, uh, purifying water, or delivering any other vital services. Next slide, please. So, for, for more than uh, half a century, FAO has led work on biodiversity, even if it's not really, really known. Uh, current files work includes a large portfolio on biodiversity and a, a recent uh, internal assessment revealed that biodiversity is a key objective in about 800 projects with a combined value of 2 billion US dollars. For instance, uh, file adopted uh, already in uh, 1950 uh, the In International Plant Protection Convention in 83, uh, FAO established the first intergovernmental body um, dealing with biodiversity relevant to food and agriculture, uh, today known as the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. In 95, um, FAO adopted the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries. In 2001, the Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources was established. In 2013, FAO and WHO uh, adopted the Code of Conduct on Pesticide Management. Uh, in 2019, uh, the state of, of, of the world, uh, biodiversity for food and agriculture, uh, was preferred under the guidance of the Commission, as I mentioned before. And in 2021, um, a, a framework uh, was um, for action on biodiversity for food and agriculture was uh, developed as a response to the state of the world. And uh, my last example would be uh, the UN decade on ecosystem restoration that FAO is, is currently uh, co-leading with, uh, with UNEP. Uh, I will stop here uh, with, uh, with example, but there are only a few examples of FAO's work to support country uh, in the implementation of normative and standard setting instruments, such as uh, international agreements, uh, code of conduct, uh, technical standards, etc. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, I will now present the, the, the FAO strategy on mainstream biodiversity, but before to present the strategy, uh, I just want to, to make a, a short reference to the, to the COP13 um, of the CBD, who took place in 2016 in, uh, in Mexico. Um, at COP16, the high level segment had a theme on uh, mainstream biodiversity across uh, productive sectors, including uh, agricultural sectors. And um, at, COP, uh, at that COP, uh, FAO offered 
to act as a platform to mainstream biodiversity uh, across agricultural sectors and to facilitate uh, uh, discussion among uh, environmental sectors and agricultural sectors. And that, uh, that offer was welcomed by, uh, by the COP. So the week after uh, uh, that COP, uh, four members requested FAO to develop uh, a strategy on mainstream uh, biodiversity. So that strategy was adopted in 2019. And the aim of the strategy is to mainstream biodiversity across agricultural sectors at national, regional, and international levels in a structured and coherent manner, taking into account national priorities, need regulation and policy, and country programming framework. The expected results of the, of the application of the strategy would be first to reduce the negative impact of agricultural practices on biodiversity, second to promote sustainable uh, agricultural practices, and third to conserve, enhance, and restore biodiversity as a whole. Next slide, please. Um, achieving the, the strategy's aim and goals require action that will focus on four main outcomes. The first one, support is provided to members at their request to enhance the capacity to mainstream biodiversity. Mm -hmm. Second one, biodiversity is mainstream across house policy, programs, and activities. Third one, role of biodiversity and ecosystem services for food security and nutrition is globally recognized. And fourth, coordination and delivery of house work on biodiversity is strengthened. Uh, next uh, slide, please. After the, the adoption of the strategy, an action plan was adopted by FAO in 2021 to support the implementation of strategy. So that action plan includes exactly 182 activities at national level alongside FAO's normative work, such as the development of international code of conduct. And there, was, there is one on, on fertilizer, for example, that was recently developed and other technical guidelines, pol uh, policy tools, awareness raising material, you know, etc. The, the action plan uh, includes action to pro promote uh, sustainable agriculture in different ways. Uh, Ms. Franier uh, mentioned the uh, work of, uh, that uh, Switzerland is doing on, on agroecology. For, for instance, FAO is currently developing me methods and metrics to assess the impact of agroecology and uh, we are currently developing the tool for agroecology perform performance evaluation. That's an example among uh, plenty others. Next slide, please. How is also working uh, at international level and make the link with the, the Convention on Bio uh, Biological Diversity and with the CBD. So the CBD is one of the three Rio Convention with the Climate Convention and the Convention to on, uh, to combat desertification, and uh, the CBD has three objectives. The first one is to ensure conservation of biodiversity, second one to promote sustainable use of biodiversity, and the third one to ensure the fair and equitable sharing of, of benefits. So most of actors, when they are talking about the, the convention, are uh, talking about the, 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 the first objective, the conservation. But for FAO, sustainable use is particularly important and we, we want to pass that message that sustainable use of biodiversity is really important for agricultural sectors and ensuring the fair and equitable or sharing of, of benefits is also really important and that's what the, the, the treaty on, gen, uh, on transgenetic resources is, is mainly working on that or fair and equitable, equitable sharing of benefits. So as Mr. Liu uh, mentioned, COP15, part two of COP15 in Montreal will be of really important following uh, part one in Kumi. And um, uh, the main objective of part two is to adopt the post 2020 global biodiversity framework. This framework is described as the biodiversity equivalent of the Paris uh, Agreement on climate. And the COP15 is, is uh, representing biodiversity uh, Paris moment. Um, next slide, please. Um, now, I, 
I, I will focus maybe my presentation on the post 2020 uh, uh, GBF, uh, Global Biosity Framework. So the, the post 2020 uh, framework will replace uh, the 20 IC targets that were agreed by, uh, by parties um, uh, as part of the CBD's uh, strategic plan for biodiversity for the period 2011 uh, 2020. So despite uh, some, some progress, none of the IC targets were fully achieved uh, by the hand uh, date uh, for, uh, of uh, 2020. And the figure in front of you represent a, a, um, is coming. This figure is from the, the Global Biodiversity Outlook Five, which evaluate the the, the IC targets. And um, the figure represents a portfolio of actions ne necessary to, to shift from the current trajectory of biodiversity loss and degradation to a positive trend of recovery. And uh, if we look at those uh, action, uh, reduce consumption, sustainable production, uh, re reducing other drivers such as climate action, um, FAO is working on all those actions. Uh, so really, just to, to, to underline that FAO has a key role to play to um, implement the, the, the upcoming uh, post 2020 TBF. So next slide, please. So the, the, the current uh, draft of the post 2020 framework includes uh, four long-term goals for 2050 and uh, 22 action-oriented targets for 2030 grouped in uh, three uh, clusters. The first cluster is uh, target one to eight, focused on threats to biodiversity. Uh, the second cluster target from target nine to 16 uh, focus on meeting uh, people's needs through sustainable use of biodiversity. And the last uh, cluster uh, from target 14 to 22, focus on tools and solutions for implementation of, uh, for implementation and mainstreaming. So uh, if we look at, at the different uh, targets, at the 22 targets, uh, more than half of the of the twenty two targets are are really at the core of our mandate. So there is a target on ecosystem restoration. There is one on maintaining and concert, uh, conserving a genetic diversity of species. Another one um, on the harvest and trade of wildlife species, which includes fishing, for for instance. Another one on pollution, which includes a. Uh, the pesticides, nutrients, and plastics. There is also target nine on the use of wild species and the benefits for people. That includes uh, food security. And uh, I could go on and on. And uh, there are also indirect uh, uh, targets. Uh, there are also targets with indirect link to, to power mandate. Uh, for instance, the one on incentives, uh, target uh, 80. Um, next slide, please. And I, I would like to, 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 to give a, an example of, of uh, some, some targets which are really important for agricultural, agricultural sectors, uh, uh, starting with uh, target 10. Um, target 10, uh, for example, which is on sustainable production system, is, uh, is currently drafted, as you can see, with a, a working text and additional text for, for reference. So there is a lot of bracketed text and with alternative technology that could be used. So just to say that it, it's still quite a long way from a clear and concise action oriented target where party we agreed to. And uh, there are a, a couple of contentious issues. I mean, the draft at the moment uh, has more than 950 brackets. So um, members, parties, we have a lot of work uh, in, in Montreal. Um, so on target 10, uh, among the contentious issue, one is whether to cover all areas or just a percentage with progressive improvement. Another one is the term ecosystem services and or a nature's contribution to, to people. Um, so for the 
the party were unable to come to a common way forward uh, in terms of the terminology. Um, another um, contentious issue was to include a reference to increasing productivity or not, but it seems that that, that will be solved most probably. And another uh, issue is uh, about making a specific uh, reference to specific approaches. Uh, some members to uh, propose to mention biodiversity um, friendly approaches and practices, including agroecology as appropriate and um, and the ecosystem approach. However, other uh, parties noted that agroecology is one type of approach and not the only one. So there is a discussion uh, around that. Uh, it's just to to give you. Um, uh, the, the flavor of the discussion uh, around the uh, target 10. And just for your information, um, at the request of civil secretariat, FAO is now uh, working on, on a note on the terminology uh, related to, um, to agricultural sectors. Next slide, please. I would also like to, to mention target 7. Again, you can see on the screen that uh, target 7 is uh, highly bracketed. Um, target seven is on on on, <laughs> um, and the, the, there are different views regarding whether the target should refer to pesticide and highly hazardous chemicals or to highly hazardous chemicals or to pesticides. Um, parties held a divergent view on whether to include the numerical figures in this target at all, or whether to include it for nutrients or for pesticide respectively. Um, Parties um, held divergent views also on whether to include reference to plastic pollution or plastic waste. Um, additionally, some uh, wishes to include other sources of pollution, uh, such as the light or noise, but uh, no agreement on that. Um, on, uh, on plastic, some parties to uh, propose to align uh, with the recent uh, UNIA resolution. Um, uh, however, at the target of the post 2020 uh, GBF have deadline of 2030, a reference to the resolution uh, is not uh, included in the target so far. Next slide, please. And uh, that will be my, my, my last example. Uh, but I could uh, talk also about the other targets. But uh, I just wanted to mention um, the target on ecosystem restoration as um, how is uh, colluding the UN decade uh, on ecosystem restoration uh, with uh, UNEP. Um, so there is, uh, on that target, th there was a, a general consensus uh, to refer to individual ecosystems uh, rather than uh, land and, uh, and sea areas, and as well to, to, to add a, a reference to coastal ecosystems. Uh, the main area of divergence are that some part, parties supported 20 or 30 percent as a numeric element, while other did not wish to include a numeric target at all. Other parties su suggested to use an absolute value such, such as uh, at least 1 billion hectares. Um, so it's just to, to say that again, on, on, on target two, there are some uh, controversial issues. Uh, Next slide, uh, please. Um, so uh, I will conclude my presentation um, that um, by saying that uh, the post-2020 uh, global biodiversity framework will not succeed without the active engagement of the food and agricultural sectors, uh, because uh, agriculture underpins the livelihoods of uh, 2.5 billion people, and there is a need to connect the post-2020 uh, global biodiversity framework with the reality of the family farmers, small-scale uh, producers, um, and uh, food security and nutrition uh, depend on biodiversity. Sustainable use of biodiversity is really crucial to, to agriculture. And uh, for FAO, implementing existing tools and developing distinctive uh, solution for agri-food system will be critical uh, to achieving the post-2020 uh, 
2020 uh, Global Biosecurity Framework, and this includes uh, uh, standard guidelines, uh, accounting and monitoring tools, code of conduct, and other uh, normative or policy instrument developed under the guidance of, of, of FA. Um, and the, the, the last message is that uh, FAO stand ready and FAO will assist countries at their re request to implement the post 2020 global biosecurity framework once adopted, uh, as many of the targets will be directly related to agri-food systems. Uh, and uh, FAO stand ready to facilitate and uh, support the transformation of uh, agri-food systems, including the, the implementation and monitoring of the, the relevant target uh, to agricultural sectors. And I'll stop here. I thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, Frédéric, for this very comprehensive briefing, for uh, starting by reminding us that indeed biodiversity, biodiversity conservation has been at the heart, at the core of FAO uh, work since it was established in, in support of uh, of its members at, uh, at global and at local level, global level going back 1950 with the adoption of the uh, International Plant Protection Convention, but also uh, over the years in support of our members, you mentioned 800 projects, $2 billion uh, invested in support of that. And then moving, I would say, a next step uh, after COP13 uh, uh, with uh, the uh, the, the, the strategy on uh, mainstreaming biodiversity across uh, the agricultural sector at, uh, at all levels. Um, what I think was also very important in, uh, in your presentation was uh, indeed the illustration of the, the importance of the, the post-2020 uh, biodiversity uh, framework for the agriculture uh, sector, uh, highlighting the the, the the challenges that lie ahead uh, going to, to Montreal, uh, where we want to go for a bracket zero type of uh, <laughs> of, uh, of achievement to reaching the, 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 the agreement. And then, of course, highlighting the work that FAO continues to play in preparation for even Montreal. You mentioned the, the, the work that FAO is doing in terms of a note uh, for the uh, agriculture-related terminology. Uh, but then also, of course, post. Uh, post uh, Montreal, the role we will continue to play uh, in terms of uh, implementing existing and, uh, and uh, developing new tools, but then of course uh, supporting the members at the request uh, for the implementation of this uh, post 2020 uh, biodiversity framework. So thank you very much, uh, Frédéric. And I think now that's all with the, the speakers, and I would like really to give you an opportunity. Uh, here in the room, but also uh, the missions that are participating virtually to, to engage and to ask uh, questions, uh, points of clarifications uh, you would like from, from us uh, on that occasion. So the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Uh, I'll say I'm very honored to be here with uh, so many delegations. And, uh, uh, maybe I should not be the first to speak, but uh, um, since I will be obliged, I'm very sorry for that, I will be obliged to leave this meeting soon. I take this opportunity. I would like to thank all of you for the presentations and uh, uh, presenting not only the, the, the landscape but also the actions and the commitment of the countries. Um, as you know, France is among the countries that are committed, and um, uh, we are we are really like the way you present uh, the involvement of uh, agriculture sector in general. The, I appreciate, I would not comment that much, but I especially appreciate the last slide saying that uh, uh, the next global framework will not succeed without the agricultural sector. And this is now, I think, obvious to many of us. Uh, it was perhaps not the case uh, in the previous decades. So 
well, we very much encourage this synergy between uh, biodiversity and agriculture, the same way um, synergy between uh, conserving biodiversity and environment, together with efforts in industrial sectors and other bodies. So this is my, my main statement, and I will just like to finish and express also the fact that uh, it is nice that this framework comes in the Paris, like Paris, Paris spirit or Paris moment, as you said. Um, it is nice that we define not only uh, philosophy and objectives, but also targets and indicators that go together with these main objectives. Um, because it can measure the progress and gives indication and a clear, uh, a clear definition to our commitment. Well, I think it's an yeah. object right as well. Thank you very much, sir. And indeed, in the wrapping up, what Frederick said, I, I forgot to emphasize that indeed we have 22 targets, and FAO will play a role in at least 11 of them. So it shows the, the centrality of the, the agriculture sector. So thank you very much, sir. Okay, Costa Rica. Thank you. Um, just wanted to thank you for, for this presentation. Um, as France just said, Costa Rica is also a country very engaged with biodiversity agenda. And we're very looking forward to actually adopting the GBF. We've been waiting for it since 2020. So we would hope that it can be adopted and that it can be an ambitious uh, framework. Um, I just wanted to highlight what you were saying about the importance of FAU working with countries to implement the framework once it's adopted. Um, when we started discussing it, Costa Rica did an internal work and we found out that it would take us at least four years to um, adapt our national policies and frameworks to be able to implement the global biodiversity framework. And that was when it was supposed to be adopted in 2020 so that we could get results by 2030. Now we have two years of, of you know, waiting and so we are a bit late on it. So I think the work from um, implementing agencies will be essential for us to be able to, to have results. And we, we saw that the IHE targets, we couldn't really reach them. So we hope that this time it will be different and that by 2030, we can get better results. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can only reaffirm FAO's uh, commitment to, to support the countries implementing the whatever agreement in the, the area of course of the relevant for our mandate thank you and oh madam from china please thank you chair and very glad to join today's discussion and uh, um, learn a lot from the presentations provided by the distinguished uh, speakers from fbo and also china and you know, Mr. Liu Ning is our deputy representative of uh, COP15 president. And just now, I know I got the I learned from his team that he was just uh, he just concluded his overseas trip to Egypt. Uh, that's COP27. So, uh, on behalf of uh, our Chinese mission, I would like to express deep gratitude for his contribution to today's meeting. And also, our gratitude also goes to FAO, the Zone Office, for organizing this very uh, productive and significant uh, session. And, you know, when I came into this, before I came into this uh, uh, panel, I feel a bit chilly outside. <laughs> but after listening to the, all these uh, intervention and presentations, I, I was much encouraged by the positive sentiments and also strong dedication and commitments expressed. And we all look forward to a successful adoption of GBF. And in China, we have a saying, more hands make work light and successful. So my best wishes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and for highlighting that indeed we are all solution oriented and working towards indeed finding uh, uh, the way forward on this. And, and again, of course, thank you, Mr. Liu, uh, for his participation um, today. So, but and, and as I said at the beginning of our event today, I mean, 
This is the first event of a series of environment, climate, ecosystem uh, restoration events that we will be organizing, uh, I would say, on, on a regular basis in, uh, in, uh, in 2023. And, uh, and we will be working closely with Frederic and his team and, and therefore, of course, perhaps debriefing on, uh, on Montreal and, and the way forward. And we really count on you and many others to join those discussions. So thank you for that. Any other? Yeah. Colleague yes. from the Office of the High Commission. Yes, thank rights. you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Federica Donati from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Maybe just one question uh, to Federica or anyone, and thank you very much for organizing this event and for the very interesting presentation. My, my question would be, to what extent do you think, as you know, the U.S. Council and the General Assembly have recognized now the right to a healthy and sustainable environment? So, to what extent that could be a little bit of an extra push to agree on the framework in a, in a week time or so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam? Perhaps we'll take, see if there is any other comment question and then we'll go. Brazil? I would first like to thank the FAO Liaison Office for organizing this meeting. I think it's very important to engage our uh, permanent missions here in Geneva also in the debates of uh, biodiversity and um, this importance of connecting, of course, agriculture to biodiversity. I think that this perspective of promoting the sustainable development goals is very important, especially for developing countries. and. I think that my question to you goes more along the lines of how to respect the different mandates while at the same time cooperating between different multilateral agreements. So while at the same time uh, FAO cannot close its eyes to biodiversity, on the other hand, we still have the problem of hunger around the world and we do need to feed people. So um, how do we uh, balance that approach and what's your vision on that topic? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Question, simply, question basically on trade-offs. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I see, uh, I Egypt, there was a question from Egypt. Okay, the colleague uh, left. Okay, so I see that Mr. Liu also is, is back on the screen. So, um, I don't know, Mr. Liu, is it do you want to, to intervene and to make a comment? Thank you, Director. And actually, I didn't want to comment more, but uh, I really thank for your very nice presentation and the comments. So it's really helpful for China as a presidency of the COP15 to conduct our mission in Montreal. So I really thank you for all your support and looking forward to see you all in Montreal. After 10 days, I will fly to Montreal. Uh, last week, I was uh, in Samsung. So I wish you to join us uh, to conduct a successful GBF. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. And Safe travels to, to Montreal. Cedric, <laughs> uh, you want to, uh, yeah, sure. to react to the two questions yeah, uh, uh, from the colleague from OHCHR and uh, from Brazil on, yeah. on, on trade offs? And, uh, okay, uh, maybe I will start with the, the question from Costa Rica. Um, and um, the thing that uh, it will take you uh, time to, 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 to adapt the, the end steps and uh, and uh, FAO, uh, Realize that, and uh, we consider it's really important for FAO to be uh, involved in uh, making the implementation of the NBSAPs. And NBSAPs are the national um, biodiversity uh, strategy and, and action plans. Action plans yeah. um, and uh, and uh, so FAO stand ready to assist country at their request uh, uh, to support the implementation of post 20 EDF. And, uh, Specifically, the, the targets uh, related to agricultural sectors. 
And uh, so we are already starting to work with a, a, a few, a few countries and just to make sure also that uh, what we are doing in the context of the, of the GDF is not undermining other decisions. So we try to align uh, uh, agricultural policies with uh, environmental policies. So that's, and we FAO really wants to, to, to be part of, of that discussion and to support country because it's true that so far, it was mainly an uh, environmental driven exercise and uh, agricultural sectors as a, as a key, key role to play, I would say. Um, so I hope I answer your, your question. And uh, Paul will be really happy to, 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 to collaborate with uh, Costa Rica just to, to work on the, the implementation of the NBSAP. Um, Regarding the question uh, on uh, human rights, um, I think if you look at, at the draft, uh, the, the issue is pretty well covered, uh, the, the, the current draft of the post 2020 GDF, and it's not that controversial. So I think uh, it should be really well reflected in, in the text to be adopted in, in, in Montreal uh, at COP50. Um, the question uh, from Brazil, uh, on uh, how to respect the different man mandates, the program of, uh, of hunger and uh, conservation. I think we cannot oppose uh, uh, conservation, sustainable use of, uh, of biodiversity and hunger. I will just illustrate uh, what I want to say with one example. Uh, for instance, uh, Fao uh, had a study on, on pollination. Um, just uh, protected, protecting uh, areas uh, which are not productive areas, but uh, natural forests around uh, uh, productive areas, just to, to protect pollinators. And we just uh, noticed just that by doing that, we just increase food production because uh, pollinators were, um, were higher, and uh, it increased uh, the food production by, by 20%. So uh, that's why in, in my introduction, I, I, it was important for me to, to mention biodiversity of food and agriculture, because biodiversity really has a, a role to play to, to secure uh, food security. And um, so, so uh, we consider uh, sustainable of biodiversity important to increase uh, food security. Um, any other question? Uh, I, I think I answered all the questions. So I don't see anybody, nobody online. Okay, so thank you very much, Frédéric, for, for indeed, and thank you, uh, Felix, for, for your comments and questions. And uh, as I said, there would be uh, more opportunities to do so. And uh, I would like now to uh, to hand over to, to my colleague, Mr. Zitouni Oldada, the Deputy Director of the Office of Climate Change, Biodiversity and uh, Environment uh, of FAO, uh, who kindly agreed to deliver some concluding remarks. Zitouni, uh, you are also just back from uh, Sherman Sheikh, and, uh, and so the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dominic, and uh, greetings, excellencies, dear colleagues, and, and everyone joining this, this event. Um, thank you, Dominic, and, and thank you to Madame Semedo, Mr. Leo, Frederick, and Isabel, and everyone really who participated in, in this event. Uh, and I would like also to really wish a very good luck to, to the Chinese presidency for, for this important COP. <clears throat> Excuse me. As, as you said, um, Dominic, I'm, I'm still recovering from the COP27, just came back yesterday. Um, but this event is really timely uh, because it's just between this COP we just finished and, of course, the important one coming up um, in, in Canada. And, and, and I think it's, it, it's very well recognized, obviously, that we're living a joint crisis, you know, the climate change crisis and the biodiversity crisis that are becoming increasingly devastating with all the impact that we're seeing between uh, you know all around the world 
And it's fair to say that um, and there is evidence that the impacts of this crisis, they're all affecting agri-food systems and global food security. And also the livelihood of, um, you know, more than two and a half billion people, as you know, who really depend on the agriculture sector around the world. And, and what this necessitates really in, in this um, context is that we need to have another look to, to the agri-food systems and, and transform them so that they become more efficient and, and more inclusive, uh, more resilient to these shocks and crises and also more sustainable. So this is really an important part of the solution that we need to address both the biodiversity loss and the climate uh, crisis and also achieving the sustainable development goals as a whole. And it's important, um, and I think Japan made, made this good point about looking at the different multilateral agreements and, and looking at other challenges that the world is facing. So these solutions we're talking about obviously must address the crisis of hunger and malnutrition that, that we're still living we still have around 828 million people who, who go hungry every day. So it's true, we need to look beyond um, uh, biodiversity and the benefits of addressing biodiversity in conjunction with the climate crisis, ecosystem restoration and others, so that we can maximize the impact and maximize the benefits that we want to achieve, and at the same time, really avoiding the trade-offs that you've been talking about. And what this also means is that we need more coordination and synergy between the ministries involved in the decision-making. Traditionally, it has been mainly the environmental ministries, but normally we need to involve more the agricultural and the finance ministries, not just in the negotiations, but in the implementation as well. So just back from COP27, I think it's been really encouraging that um, finally we've got a decision on loss and damage. And you know what loss and damage means is that, you know, the, the impact of, by, uh, on biodiversity, the impact on um, food production and livelihood, um, and we've seen a commitment for increasing funding for adaptation as well. So biodiversity um, would be critical, obviously, in achieving this adaptation goal and in building the resilience of, of the agri-food systems and, and societies as a whole. Um, so I think in relation to, to climate change, um, and as you know, the, the overall uh, goal is to, to limit the increase of um, uh, global warming to 1.5 degrees C. But we cannot achieve this, obviously, without protecting and restoring biodiversity, because the biodiversity is really the, the bedrock of um, livelihood and of production and of um, you know, people's lives. Um, and it was very encouraging, actually, at, at the COP, COP27, on the 16th of, of November, there was a biodiversity day at COP26. And at the same time, the same day, um, we had the visit of the Brazil's new president-elect Lula da Silva, uh, which brought really new momentum in addressing biodiversity and climate change because he pledged to commit you know, the, the rainforest nation to, to tackle the climate crisis and offer to, to hold in a future UN talks as well. And it's a really massive gain for climate change and biodiversity. So we really have to seize this opportunity, this political momentum from COP27 as countries are traveling to, to Montreal for COP15. And just to, to finish, um, because there was a lot that's been said you know, through the discussion and, and thank you again, because it's been really timely. I, I definitely picked up a lot from the presentations. Um, there is much, much more room actually to further advocate this independence or interdependence between the agri-food systems and the environment in particular. As you know, the dimensions of the SDGs are 
three main ones, the environment, the economic and social dimensions. So we need to ensure that there is a good interaction between the environmental activities and those linked to the social and economic development. And what this means also is that this is really good opportunity in investing in nature and in the environment, in restoring, in protecting you know, biodiversity and nature in general. So um, as it was said, you know, the FAO is, is really, really to, to ready to support the countries and work with other partners in, in driving this forward in connection with other priorities that we mentioned. And um, you know, we're, we're really committed because our mandate it encapsulates, as you know, you know, the the feet in hunger in general that has various dimensions that are related to that and biodiversity, climate crisis are one of those that we're committed to. And we very much look forward to working with the countries and all partners towards the COP20, COP15 and beyond, particularly for the, the implementation in supporting countries and farmers on the ground to see the results. So thank you again for the support. Thank you, Dominique and the whole team for really this timely um, webinar, very interesting, very constructive, and, and back to you, Dominic. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Zitouni, for, for your remarks and for making the link between uh, what just ended and what is coming up in, the, in a couple of days from now. So thank you for that. Uh, I think we have reached the end of this, uh, of this event today. I would like to thank of course, all those um, who have participated in person in, in the room, uh, but also the quite a large number of people participating uh, virtually, I think. And, uh, and I would like, of course, to, to say a huge thank to our, uh, our speakers uh, today, uh, Ms. Frania from Switzerland, uh, Mr. Liu uh, from China, who has a big task ahead uh, in the coming few weeks. Uh, but also our colleague uh, Frederic, and then of course you, Zitoni, and all colleagues who have contributed to, uh, to what has been a fruitful discussion, the first of the kind uh, for us. But as I say, please stay tuned. There will be uh, many other opportunities in the coming month uh, to discuss uh, biodiversity, um, climate, ecosystem re uh, restoration, and their importance for uh, transformation towards. Uh, more resilient, inclusive, efficient, and sustainable uh, agri-food system. So thank you very much, and I wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye.